Today is the 7th of November 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. If you're joining us for the first time, let me say thank you and welcome. And allow me to explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of a mixture of prayer, scripture and music. It's dead simple, it's dead easy. You'll pick it up as we go along. We always start each episode with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? Lord of life, of love, of peace, of time itself, we stand in awe of your eternal presence and resurrection power. We open our lives once again to your involvement. Come, Lord Jesus. As you sit in heaven, be seated here on the throne of our hearts. Forgive us our sin and enter in. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's readings, we continue with the book of Jeremiah, and Jesus has his famous discussion with Nicodemus. We'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Lord, we ask that you would prepare our hearts as we read scripture today. Open our hearts and minds to the mystery and truths that are hidden within its pages, that we might discover a clarity of understanding that is hidden previously from us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the modern English version, And we begin with Jeremiah 30. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Write all the words that I have spoken to you in a book. For surely the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel and Judah. The Lord says, I also will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. These are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus says the Lord, I have heard a sound of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see, can a male labor with child? Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in labor, and all faces turn pale? Alas, for that day is great, there is none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I shall break his yoke from off their neck and tear away their bonds, and strangers shall no longer make them their slaves. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I shall raise up for them. Therefore do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord. Do not be dismayed, O Israel, for I will save you from afar, and your seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. Although I make a full end of all nations, wherever I have scattered you, yet I will not make a full end of you. But I will correct you in measure, and will not leave you altogether unpunished. For thus, says the Lord, your bruise is incurable, and your wound is severe. There is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They do not seek you. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, 
because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins are numerous. Why do you cry because of your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable. Because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins are numerous, I have done these things to you. Therefore, all who devour you will be devoured, and all your adversities, every one of them, will be put into captivity. And those who plunder you will become plunder, and all who prey upon you I will give for prey. For I will restore health to you, and I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord, because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man cares for. Thus says the Lord, I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city will be built upon her own heap, and the palace will remain on its rightful place. Out of them will proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who make merry. And I will multiply them, and they will not be a few. I will also glorify them, and they will not be small. Their children also will be as before, and their congregation will be established before me, and I will punish all who oppress them. Their leader shall be one of them, and their ruler shall proceed from their midst. And I will cause him to draw near, and he will approach me. For who is this that dares to approach me, says the Lord? You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Look at the whirlwind of the Lord that goes forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It will fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he has done it, until he has performed the intentions of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness, when I went to give Israel rest. The Lord has appeared to him from afar, saying, Indeed, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness I have drawn you. Again I will build you, and you will be built, O virgin of Israel. You will again be adorned with your tambourines and shall go forth in the dances of those who make merry. You will yet plant vines on the mountains of Samaria. The planters will plant them and will enjoy them. For there will be a day when the watchmen on the hills of Ephraim will proclaim, Arise, and let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish, praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the remote parts of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her who is in labor with child together, a great company will return there. They will come with weeping, and with supplications I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters, in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far off, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him who was stronger than he. Therefore they will come and sing in the height of Zion, and will be joyful over the goodness of the Lord, for wheat, and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd and their souls will be as a watered garden. And they will not sorrow any more at all. Then the virgin will rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people will be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, A voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Thus says the Lord, Keep your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your future, says the Lord, that your children will come back to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim pleading, you have chastised me, and I was chastised as an untrained calf. 
Turn me back, and I will be turned, for you are the Lord my God. Surely after turn, I turned back, I repented. And after I was instructed, I struck myself on my thigh. I was ashamed and even humiliated, because I bore the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spoke against him, I surely do remember him still. Therefore my heart longs for him. I will surely have mercy on him, says the Lord. Set up road marks, place guideposts. Set your heart towards the highway, even the way by which you went. Turn back, O virgin of Israel, turn back to these your cities. How long will you go about, O faithless daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing on earth. A woman shall obtain a man. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, once again they shall use the speech in the land of Judah, and in the cities where I restore their fortunes. May the Lord bless you, O habitation of righteousness and mountain of holiness. And Judah and all its cities will dwell there, the farmer and those who go out with the flocks. For I satiate the, we the weary souls, and I replenish every languishing soul. Upon this I awoke and looked, and my sleep was sweet to me. Surely the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with seed of men, and with the seed of beast. It shall come to pass that I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down, and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they will say no more, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one will die for his own iniquity. Every man that eats the sour grapes, his teeth will be set on edge. Surely the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, although I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus says the Lord who gives the sun for light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea so that the waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If these ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel will also cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says the Lord, If heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says the Lord. Surely the days are coming, says the Lord, when the city will be built to the Lord from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate. The measuring line shall stretch out straight to the hill Garib, and then turn to Goa. The whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes, and the fields of the Kidron Valley, to the corner of the horse gate towards the east will be holy to the Lord. It will not be plucked up, nor thrown down any more for ever. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. For then the king of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the house of the king of Judah. For Zedekiah king of Judah had shut him up, saying, Why do you prophesy? You say, Thus says the Lord, I am about to give the city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And Zedekiah king of Judah shall not escape out of the hand of Chaldeans, but will surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and will speak with him face to face, and see him eye to eye. And he will lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there he will be until I visit you, says the Lord. Though you fight against the Chaldeans, you will not succeed. So Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, your uncle, will come to you, saying, Buy my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. 
So Hanamel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said to me, Please buy my field, that is in Anathoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance and the redemption is yours, buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. I bought the field of Hanamel from my uncle's son, that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, even seventeen shekels of silver. I signed and sealed the deed, and summoned witnesses and weighed the money from him in the balances. So I took the deed of purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, the son of Masaiah, in the sight of Hanamel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase before all the Jews who sat in the court of the prison. I charged Baruch in their presence, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, this signed deed of purchase and this deed which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may last many days. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall again be possessed in this land. Now when I delivered the deed of purchase to Baruch the son of Moriah, I prayed to the Lord, saying, Our Lord God, truly you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. You show loving kindness to thousands, and recompense the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them, O great and mighty God. The Lord of hosts is his name, great in counsel and mighty indeed whose eyes are open to all the ways of the sons of men, to give to everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his deeds. You have set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt even to this day, and in Israel, and among other men, and you have made yourself a name as it is today. You have brought your people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and with wonders, and with a strong hand, with a stretched out arm, and with great terror. You have given in this land which you swore to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. They entered and possessed it, but they did not obey your voice or walk in your law. They have done nothing at all that you have commanded them to do, therefore you have caused all this calamity to come upon them. See, the siege ramps have come to the city to take it, and the city is given into the hands of the Chaldeans who fight against it because of the sword, and of the famine, and of the pestilence, and what you have spoken to pass as you can see. O Lord God, you have said to me, Buy this field for money and call in witnesses, although the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Therefore thus says the Lord, I will give the city into the hand of the Chaldeans and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the Chaldeans who fight against the city, shall come and set the city on fire and burn it with the houses, upon whose roofs they have offered incense to Baal, and poured out drink offerings to other gods to provoke me to anger. Indeed, the sons of Israel and the sons of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the sons of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, says the Lord. Indeed, this city has been to me a provocation of my anger, and my fury from the day that they built it, even to this day, so that I should remove it from before my face, because of all the evil of the sons of Israel and of the sons of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their officials, their priests, and their prophets, and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned their back to me, and not their face, though I have taught them rising up early and teaching them, Yet they have not listened, nor received instruction. But they set their abominations in the house that which is called by my name to defile it. They build their high places to Baal, which are in the valley of Beth Himon, to cause their sons and their daughters to walk through the fire to Molech, which I had not commanded them. Nor did it come into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Now therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the city of which you say, It shall be delivered into the hands of the king of Babylon by the sword, and by famine and by pestilence. See, I will gather them out of all the countries wherever I have driven them in my anger, and in my fury, and in great wrath. And I will bring them again to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. 
they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever, for their good and for their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. For I will put my fear in their hearts, so that they shall not depart from me. Indeed, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For thus says the Lord, Just as I have brought all this great calamity upon these people, so I will bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Fields will be bought in this land of which you say, It is desolate without man or beast. It is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men will buy fields for money, sign and seal deeds, and call in witnesses in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah, and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valleys, and in the cities of the Negev, for I will restore their fortunes, says the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus says the Lord, the Maker of earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. For thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the houses of the city, and concerning the houses of the king of Judah, which are thrown down to make a defense against the siege mounts and against the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury, all for whose wickedness I have hidden my face from the city. I will bring it health and healing, and I will heal them, and I will reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and the fortunes of Israel, and will build them up at the first. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. It will be to me a name of joy, praise and honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear of all the good that I do to them, and they will fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure for it. Thus says the Lord, Again there will be heard in this place of which you say it is desolate, without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, that are desolate, without man, without inhabitant, without beast, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who shall say, Give thanks to the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, and for his mercy endures for ever and for those who bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will restore the fortunes of the land as at first, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Again in this place which is desolate, without man and without beast, and in all the cities, will be a habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the Negev, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass, pass again under the hands of him who numbers them, says the Lord. Surely the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will perform the good word which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the earth. In those days Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she shall be called, The Lord our Righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor shall the Levitical priests lack a man before me to offer burnt sacrifices, to kindle grain offerings, and to sacrifice continually. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, so that there shall not be night or day in their season, then also my covenant may be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign on his throne, and without the Levitical priests my ministers. As the hosts of heaven cannot be measured, nor the sand and the sea measured, so I will multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister to me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, 
Have you not considered what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord have chosen, he has cast them off? Thus they have despised my people, that they should no more be a nation before them. Thus says the Lord, If my covenant for day and night does not stand, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then I should cast away the seed of David and Jacob my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet I will restore their fortunes and have mercy on them. John 3 There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly I say to you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly I say to you, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. For that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can this be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, but you do not know these things? Truly, truly I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness of what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you of earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven except he who descended from heaven, even the Son of Man who is in heaven. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the verdict, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come into the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that it might be revealed that his deeds have been done in God. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea. He remained with them there and baptized. John also was baptizing in Anon, near Salem, because much water was there, and people came and were baptized. For John had not yet been put in prison. Then the dispute arose between some of John's disciples and the Jews about ceremonial cleaning. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have borne witness, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. John answered, A man can receive nothing unless it has, unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear witness of me that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from heaven is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who is from heaven is above all. He bears witness of what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without measure to him. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things into his hands. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Psalm 79 a Psalm of Asaph O oh God, 
The nations have come into your inheritance. Your holy temple they have defiled. They have laid Jerusalem to ruins. The dead bodies of your servants they have given to the birds of the sky for food, and the flesh of your faithful to the animals of the land. You their blood they have poured out like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn, and a derision to those who are around us. How long, O Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath upon the nations who do not know you and upon the kingdoms who are not called upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Do not choose to remember our former iniquities. Let your tender mercies come swiftly to us, for we are bought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and purge away our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nation say, Where is their God? May the avenging of the shed blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you according to the greatness of your power. Preserve those who are appointed to die, and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their lap their approach that they have approached you, O Lord. But we are your people, the sheep of your pasture, and will give you thanks for ever. We will declare your praise to all generations. We're going to have our second piece of music, just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after music, we're going to say our prayers for today. Before we say our prayers for today, just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email. Check the show notes for all the contact details. There are links in the show notes, and if you click the links, they'll take you to wherever you need to go. This week in the run-up to Remembrance Day, I'm asking everybody to pray for those in the military and those who have been who have survived military conflict or who have been left behind and those families affected by war and the military military conflict. So if we can remember them as we go through our prayers today. Let's pray, shall we? 
Almighty God. Upon the cross, sorrow and pain and every dreadful, tragic consequence of sin was overcome. So today, we remember all those who have joined in that sacrifice for peace and for justice. Lord, we give thanks for the bravery of men and women who have served for harmony and love. And in a world that is still torn and broken, we declare that Jesus is Lord, that hope overcomes despair, that joy overcomes sorrow, that peace overcomes hostility, that love overcomes hate. Lord, from the tomb, the promise of eternity emerged in a resurrected Christ. Grace was poured into the hearts of all those who suffer, mourn and grieve. Lord, we lift our hearts to you and continue to remember, to hope and to love. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.